Welcome everybody. This is July 14th, 2021. And this is the Cubert Community Meeting. Um, Chris is not able to run the meeting this week, so I am standing in for him. My name is Stu Gott. And we normally start out with introductions. So I would open it up to anybody who is new to the community or wants to introduce themselves uh, just to say hi. Don't look like we have any takers this week. Um, if there is anybody, you're welcome to speak up at any point. So looking at the agenda, first thing we have um, a topic by Itamar. And so I will let you introduce that, sir. Hey everyone. Um, so this is about um, the fact that we are using um, a, an old stress binary in our uh, Fedora with tooling image. Um, so basically, this uh, this binary is uh, is dead. It's not maintained for a long time, and it's uh, been it, it has been uh, rewritten, um, and and it's now called stress ng. Um, so this binary is uh, fully uh, compatible with the old one. I've done some local testing to verify that, um, and I've sent a mail about it uh, to Kubernetes Dev. So I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up and to know if, if there are any objections or thoughts or questions about it. I have a question. Uh, it's related to stress. Uh, I, from what I understand, we use it in order to slow down the migration. So we could assert on uh, specific uh, events and uh, states, right? Um, yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. So uh, one way we use in the migration test is to uh, make sure the migration is delayed enough for it to, to, to transfer into post uh, copy migration, for example. Okay, uh, I have another idea. Why, why don't we use the API for the bandwidth of the migration? I mean, we could reduce it to be like 10 kilobytes this uh, probably will uh, slow down the migration as well, right? Right. So uh, as far as I understand, um, we tried to do that in the code. Um, and for some reason, it didn't really work. I know that Roman issued a PR about that uh, recently that's uh, supposed to fix that. But that's all I know. I, I, I don't have more details than that. We currently uh, basically uh, use both, both uh, uh, reducing the bandwidth and uh, performance stress. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we need some kind of a changes that uh, that will occur in the VM. Um, if this is completely static, uh, I mean, the migration can can finish before we actually uh, have a chance to uh, to switch to post copy. Okay, thanks. So, NMR, from my point of view, I thought we already were using stress ng. So, I, personally, I have no objection to to switching to using that. But does anybody else have any concerns that we might need to consider? You can always uh, respond to the mail if you have another questions and uh, you remember later. Yeah, it just seems like the right thing to do. Okay, sounds like we're pretty unanimous on this one, at least for those that are uh, chiming in. Next up, we have a topic from Vatsal. So I will turn it over to you, sir. Hi, uh, so we have a new feature coming in, which is uh, guest agent, guest agent ping, based ping, uh, ping probe for readiness probes. And it has gone through a few reviews and I think it's uh, ready enough to go in. So if you have any thoughts, suggestions, questions, um, this would be a good time. So how, so this is a readiness probe that's based exclusively on the guest agent, which would I assume then mean that it only works if you have a guest agent installed? Yes, you would have to have a guest agent installed and running. Uh, and we would try to ping, uh, we would try to run the ping command, guest ping command on the, from the libvirt. Uh, from the word launcher and we'll see uh, if the guest replies with uh, error, it's not ready. If it replies uh, nil error, we, we consider it's, it's the guest is up and we update the readiness status. Okay, sounds pretty, uh, 
harmless. And uh, so the guest agent in this case would probably be up more or less when the system is already running at that point. So it's a decent indicator that the system is actually ready to receive traffic. Yep. It's actually a more precise uh, indicator than compared to other ones. Interesting. All right. Anybody have any thoughts, questions, concerns? Okay, that would be uh, the last topic that was proposed. Is there anything on anybody's mind that they would like to bring up this week? Yeah, actually, I just have one question. Um, this is the readiness on the pod, right? The, yes, uh, uh, the we, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, we said the readiness, uh, uh, the guest agent ping uh, on, on, on the spec of the VM or VMI, and that would be translated to the word probe uh, based, we already have a word probe binary inside the uh, inside inside the word launcher, and it would mean that it would uh, it would translate it to word probe based exec probe on the uh, VMI pod. Yes. If I, uh, okay. Did I answer? Or did, yes. did I confuse you? No, I was I, the reason uh, I was asking this because um, we 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 talked about this I don't know it was two weeks ago um, when this was brought up for pause right where um, we wanted to express readiness um, or we wanted to we wanted to disable readiness when we pause a VM. And, and, and I guess one of the, the summaries of the discussion is that it makes sense that we pause a VM that a pod should not be ready because we shouldn't, it, it's not able to receive traffic anyway. So it doesn't make sense. Um, so like when, for this flow, what sounds like, so we're, you have a guest agent. You're starting a virtual machine. You have um, you have a ping that goes through and, and it's going to make sure that it that the VM is launched and is actually able to receive traffic. So normally, like in in the case of the not being guest agent, um, we like what's like we the when does the pod go ready? Like the the pod goes ready when when what? Like it's is it when uh, I think it's when we just when it starts, right? Like, is there any, is there anything else that currently um, sets that? Does anyone know? Yeah, if there is, if you don't set the guest agent readiness probe or a network readiness probe, it just goes ready after a few seconds. Similar okay. to pods, yeah. Yeah, so then like, so that would mean in terms of like, just thinking of the, the, the phase transitions, Roman, like this would mean that like, um, we don't go, we don't hand off to, the um, to the uh, the handler, the controller doesn't hand off to the handler until we go, we, till we see the pod is ready, right? So this would mean like we're going to be, so our phase transition is going to change a little bit. That's independent. We have uh, we we have, we see diff, we are not waiting for the pod to become ready. So we can't use. I mean, we can't use the readiness probe on the pod because readiness probe on the pod means ready to receive network traffic, right? No, but doesn't and the what doesn't the controller though check if it's a, if a pod's ready before it does? We, we check it for a kind of readiness, but we do not check for ready. So it's a, it's a different kind of readiness is what you're saying? It's a, it's a, a, a cubert infrared readiness, I would call it. I just okay. have, I have to, um, I have to open the code to check it okay. exactly what conditions, but we mostly just check if some containers are running and so on before we hand over, but we're not waiting for the readiness. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check that because then if if this changes expectations in terms of like, like I'm just thinking in terms of what we're doing with the the in six scale, like in the way we're doing performance, because of the way that we look at like the phase transition times and the way we want to calculate thresholds, if this does change things, it's just something that we have to keep in mind. No, that, that should be independent. What is, I, I don't know, Atzel, if you discussed it when Siri for joining late, but uh, did you also consider for the pause thing to use virtual controller and the readiness gate? No, I don't know who was that brought this up with pause. Um, I, so I don't have an answer. Who was it? Someone talked it was, about I think it was like two weeks ago. During Bug Scrub. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 
I just wanted to highlight that we have different ways for that too. Like it's a little bit annoying, as you said, that even it's paused, that you would still that we would still try to route traffic there. And uh, one way is also to use the. It's a little bit tricky to let your handler do stuff there. And it's also a little bit tricky to use the guest agent readiness probe for something like this. Okay, I, I just wanted to highlight that in case. So you're saying it's different than we don't check the actual pod readiness for when we move between phases. So we yeah, will. The pod readiness anything, we'll, is we'll really kept free to be really an indicator or that it can be an indicator for network traffic received. Yeah. Okay. Like on this is what I wanted to check. Okay. So it sounds like we wrapped up there. Um, is there anything else that we'd like to raise before moving on to the open floor? All right, Roman, uh, you have a topic. I, oh, sorry. I have a question. The floor is yours, sir. Well, well, this guess this guess ping is related to really networking. I'm i I lost it a little bit. Uh, you can. Or is it just a, or is it just a, you know, a check that the that the guest engine is running? Yeah, there there are different uh, grades of being ready. Let me put it that way, right? The simplest one is you don't define anything, and we just assume that after some time there is probably something ready to receive traffic. This is the simplest one. Then there is the next one that's the guest agent readiness, where we assume that as soon as the operating systems booted and guest agent pings are coming through, that it's ready to receive some kind of traffic tr through services. But, uh, and there, for the first two, there's always the assumption that we have actually no clue what you're doing with your VM. But uh, if you know which application you wanna run in and you wanna serve one services to only route traffic to the VM when your application inside the VM or applications are ready, you can really define a readiness probe like on pod, which does really a, a HTTP or TCP probe on the VM before going to ready. That are the different grades, let me put it that way. Yeah, so so my I guess my, my maybe my question is too low level, but I was wondering if this guest ping is actually checking something at the IP level or or is it no. just checking that the guest agent service inside the, or the guest engine itself is just running, not related to networking, because the guests yeah. may have no IP even. So this yeah, is the part that, that I'm yeah. missing. Yeah, but this is this can very well be so that you didn't even run the HCP, uh, but you would still see this ready when the guest agent responds. Yeah, yeah that's, yes, that's uh, yeah. So sorry. That, are, that hey. are basically, yeah, as I said, there are some, uh, guessing limitations here, yeah, to just kind of narrow down without further specification regarding to your app, if it's really ready. Yeah. And this just says that the workload is alive, but I mean, there are multiple ways to, to identify that. I don't know why they would tra uh, tie it to traffic. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's not really related to traffic, but it's related to, for example, in the test, we are checking that uh, we are waiting in some way if the guest agent is uh, is alive before we check if, for example, if the IP address are there. Because if it's, if the guest agent is not even, we don't know if it is even running, then there is no the, the information from the status about the details of the interfaces are not not relevant because they were not gathered yet. So maybe yeah. this is like, uh, I can check this. If it, this is ready, then I can check the other uh, details. Something like that, right? Probably, yeah. Um, yeah. Right now, yeah. But I said right now, it's, it's really just a very basic indicator, which you can, a, a very cheap way without having to think too much about the operating system in there, without having to think too much about the application in there, to get an indicator that you're not already routing five minutes before the VM is even booting traffic there. Like when you have, when you have two VMs and both should serve traffic, it's nice to have a cheap way to indicate that it's booted at least. Yeah. 
Don't we already have a condition uh, for the guest agent? I, I thought we do. Uh, and we dynamically- yeah, There is something. Yeah, that was always there. That was yeah, and this is using been there for a wrong, wrong time. But the guest agent probe is an extra way which is extra designed to tie into traffic, uh, into application readiness. It's not perfect or anything. It's like this, the, the initial delay where we don't know anything about the operating system and just delay it for some time. You will probably not want to use it when you have all the information or readiness endpoint anyway. I'm just... But uh, just uh, to say that uh, maybe it's important to to say in the PR, explain why why this is needed compared to the old one. Like, what's the difference? So when to use that one will be more clear then. Which PR? I mean the the PR that is now adding the readiness for the for the guest agent thing for the guest thing to say why why that one is. Oh, well, uh, that I, one I, is I uh, more relevant. Oh, it, I thought, oh, oh, now I get it. Sorry, there was the guest agent exec probe PR, which we merged for some time. Okay, now I get it. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't know that there is another PR. And the guest agent exec is merged for some time already. Yeah, this actually utilizes yeah. the exec probes eventually. So now I'm curious, I mean, what's the difference between um, between this PR and what we already have in terms of conditions? I mean, we add and remove a condition when the guest agent is not responsive for it. Okay. Or now, just not to watch a condition. Now that I know that there is a second PR now for agent probes. Uh, so what you get with the exit probe is that the pod gets too ready. Without that passing, the services are not forwarding traffic to the pod. That's the only purpose, pur purpose of life of readiness probes. Compared to conditions, the service does not know anything about services in Kubernetes do not know anything about conditions which we add on our VMs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there there is a way to specify that a condition counts as a readiness check, but I think it would be more complicated for us because of the way we set the condition. Like, I think we only yeah, set it to true. You can only cases. do that from outside. That's on the pod and you can only do it from yeah. outside, not from within. Right. So that's yeah. what, that, what I meant when we when talking about past VMs, that they still stay at ready, even if there is no readiness prompt defined. There we could, for instance, make use of this extra condition, which controller could edit, which controller sees the VMs past and does it, for instance. Yeah. Or which yeah. handler sees it. Or moves it to, uh, I suppose it. my question is, why do we have to do the extra ping instead of this PR? We just um, look into uh, look into the condition. I mean, if the condition is there, just reply yes. I, I mean, I don't know <laughs> because so uh, the, the condition uh, is actually using ping. Uh, oh, so we're using. I'm yeah, sorry, so I did not look the... at the PR. I can't answer that, but maybe someone else. <laughs> the assertion here is slightly stronger. An exec ping is if the pod is ready. When you start using a guest agent ping, now we're actually saying all the services, as far as we can tell, have you know, system D has come up uh, to the point where the guest agent has been booted inside the VM. So it's, it's a stronger statement of readiness than just, hey, pod's running. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we, the, have, the, a, the we have a condition for this. I think uh, we monitor the guest agent and then we add the remove a condition when the guest yeah, agent. Uh, uh, so there, and now we add another guest agent condition or? And now we add a specific ping for guest agent. Okay, we could and probably we just. These, these are doing the same yeah. thing. You could probably just use the existing code paths and just. just yeah. I think the current pinging happens, correct me if I'm wrong, it happens in Vert Handler. Right, and it updates the pod, or does it update the so, VM? Well, virt launch, virt launch is periodically pinging it, so we could probably cache that and just look at that. What oh, that's what I mean. Response was. Yep. I, I I don't know if the I I'm not familiar enough with Gmo and the guest agent stuff. If okay. if um, that's an optimization worth it because the ping seems very simple and small. 
Yeah, if but the, the additional ping is a problem. We, we use ping anyway. Exactly what the launcher is doing right now. I mean, it's pinging the guest agent. So now, in yeah. addition to us constantly pinging the guest agent, we will ping it from external through the API. Is it? So I'm just. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's because it's translated to the kubelet. Basically, the kubelet does it with specific settings, right? Yeah, the the kubelet now calls in the pods this weird probe command, and that uses the gRPC to tell the launcher, "Hey, ping, please, and tell me how it went." Okay. And then, based on that, it, it accesses yeah. one or zero. In, in theory, it would not have to do that. It could also ping basically virtual launcher directly and ask virtual launcher if if the last connection to the guest agent was successful. I guess, but this is a pretty clean path this way. Yeah. What well, what we could do if the if we're, I, I I thought the the guest agent condition is on the VM or VMI because if it was on the pod on a if it's on the pod we can just tell Kubernetes hey this condition is also a readiness condition and we don't have to do an exit probe anymore but I think the uh, the, the current ping condition is on the VMI no yeah. Probably, but couldn't you just look at the VMI? I mean, the kubelet can't. No, not the kubelet. I can't. mean, this this, um, this readiness yeah. problem. Right. Yeah. The VMI yeah. object, right? uh, okay. But that's more complicated. That that's actually another Kubernetes request instead of just talking to Kimu and saying, "Hey, are you done? Are you there?" Hey. But it still goes to uh, through VM uh, through the um, Virt Launcher API, right? Uh, no, 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 no. The kubelet pings directly the pod with uh, Virt Launcher. Uh, I'll, this I'll is completely self-contained in the pod. Like, it's only the about the pods. Yeah, it's only about the pods readiness, and it, everything happens inside the pod. Sorry for asking, but this is like something is odd here. You are saying that this is really a readiness probe from from Kubernetes that Kubelet yeah. is checking, but this is this something is not making sense because in the beginning there this will fail. So what are the implications? It will take time until it will be working. Yeah, like yes. I guess and like take most some time. probes. Yeah, and you okay. have different configurations options for that. You can normally. I, I didn't look at the PR, so I can't say that this is all there, but on normally on all the readiness probes, you have a startup delay time or, or a delay time until you do the first probe and you can uh, specify retry timeouts and everything on the probe. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. We have, so, we have it in this PR as well. So, I mean, okay, so. this PR uses, uh, uses the Vert Launcher API. And then instead of, instead of just you know, doing the actual probe, it would just return uh, the VMI object and then. And oh, then... now I see it. Yeah, this doesn't look right. It shouldn't yeah. do that. No, it, it, I guess it should just do. We just need to make sure there is only one source of of information and not two. Like either you do it, you take the information to the VMI through the pod. Or you take it from the from the other way around. You don't do two at the, in parallel, right? So let's say it this way: uh, the, we probably should discuss the implementation in the PR. But uh, I think having yeah. the readiness probe in general makes sense. It's more about the implementation, which we have to look at. I think here. It, from what I understood from the conversation is the problem you seem to have is that we ping on two channels, kind of, which I don't know if it's really a problem, but I, I get the point. Um, okay, I think at this point, we're yeah. diving into the weeds and the implementation, and as, as yeah. Roman had just said, maybe, maybe this is something that we do want to capture in the PR itself so that we don't lose the train of thought. And wow, that's all. I would have expected this to be not quite so controversial. Sorry about that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, moving on. 
Uh, Roman, I think I, it's time to turn it over to you to talk about uh, vendor and go mode. Yeah, um, just to follow up, uh, a few a few people probably remember that uh, we had on the latest Libert Go bindings update the issue that, or yeah, or one of the latest updates, we had the issues that the vendor folder and Go mode were not completely in sync and some code changes were checked in and they got reverted later on by the next update, which caused some issues and we should just have had a CI job verifying that and just wanted to say that we have one now. It's called pool Kubert verify go mode. And it will only be triggered if the vendor or the window folder go mode or go some changes and it will check, it will, it will do a complete dependency sync and then just check if the git repo changed and fail if it did. That should help probably help there. That was it. Okay, any thoughts or comments on that? All right, that reaches the uh, end of our main agenda. We usually go through pull requests, mailing lists, bug scrub, et cetera. Let me see if I can, nope, I don't have the ability to share my screen. I assumed I did, I apologize. Won't be able to do that today. Um, so unless somebody else has the ability to share. So we can verbally talk about pull requests if that helps. And looking at them, I see an LGTM on Simlink for CA certificates. We've got a few open in the last 24 hours. Um, add timeout to Istio proxy termination request. Is this worth discussing here? Maybe, maybe if I type it into the chat, is this one? Yeah, I mean, just looking at the title, I understand what's happening. So there's a, uh, when we're terminating the pod, if there's this DO sidecar container, we're calling a um, HTTP request to that container, tell it to shut down quick, and we just want to eventually time that out, I guess. Okay, we're doing some sort of back off. That makes sense. Anybody see any other high profile PRs that are worth discussing here? Anything that somebody wants to bring up in terms of getting reviews? Um, there's, a, there's a PR that I'm working and uh, I'm pretty stuck. Uh, maybe I asked for I ask a, I asked a, question, a question in the PR, the conversations. Uh, maybe someone could uh, take a look and uh, give me a direction. Basically, what I'm doing there is adding two tests that uh, checks uh, different scenarios of SRV migration, but now it doesn't work. And, uh, and, and because uh, one of the changes that uh, was not uh, very recent, uh, I think uh, two day, uh, one day ago, that uh, solves the VMI update collisions. But I couldn't figure out uh, what is going on there. <laughs> so I will send a link for, to the PR. Just a second. Yeah, I can There it is. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? The link? Yes. I was just getting it into my paste buffer. So I pasted it into the Google Doc, but I guess people can follow along here at home. Um, what I, what I'm uh, the what weird that I see there the what's weird with the new changes is that if I start a migration 
and disconnects uh, SRV devices. When the, uh, as soon as the migration fails, um, we, we update the domain metadata, migration metadata with completed fail and uh, completed true and failed true. But this change never gets get updated to be reflected on the VMI status migration state. And I couldn't figure out why. This is basically the problem. So the metadata is updated, but the status is not? Yes, exactly. Okay. When, I, I, when I dump the domain uh, spec, I see it there, but uh, not on the VMI migration state. And it, it used to work uh, like two, three days ago. Is it? Um... When it worked three days ago, there was a change in some metadata transfer or something. There was one PR which changed something in migrations. Maybe it's just related to it. It's, uh, I managed to, to figure out which PR was it. It's, uh, let me send the link. It was the it was the PR that uh, reduced the VMI update collision event collision something like that. That's surprising, David. I would not see any way how this could be related to your PR, but maybe. Oh. I would have uh, I would have more expected this PR would have an impact on that. Which is called only remove migration to specific metadata from the XML, but yeah, but this know, is I, will, I will test it. I will try uh, to replace it just before that and see how it goes. Wait. Yeah, we have to look at the PR again. But uh, if, if this was a problem, I wouldn't see the migration metadata on the domain, right? Well, the way it works is that uh, when we update uh, the metadata, in the guest, uh, in the domain, um, Verd Handler fetches it and then updates uh, the status according to that. Yeah, but if this doesn't happen, then, um, I don't know, we either didn't, uh, Verd Handler didn't uh, update, but it wouldn't, I mean, I don't know, need to look into this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh... It's hard to, to, to get it at first because it should work uh, as you would expect. And it, and it, it did. But uh, I, I suspect the PR that I sent earlier because it's, it uh, changes the way, the way yeah. um, VMI updates are picked. So for I one other. Yeah. David's PR can, could lead. There, there may be a bug in the PR, and then the, the, the status may not be updated. That could really be. Um, it's possible. I just thought that it's good. <laughs> we <laughs> just, I guess, yeah, file an extra PR or some uh, extra issue or something and ping David on it again. <laughs> and then, yeah. Just check the PR again. I don't see the issue immediately why it could happen. But what can happen is that the that our expectation logic is not right, and we think that we should get another VMI update uh, soon, and we're not updating because of that. 
and then this but this update is never happening and then we never clear the expector and then it can be delayed for a few minutes until the next update comes in. Mm. Well, there is a few lines that actually calls for the sync to, or the VMI sync. I mean, the, you know, the whole update phase. Maybe we need to lower it down after a few lines that I saw that. I don't want to confuse you. I will try that and uh, send you it later. Either way, I will ping the David as well. Okay. So moving on, if thanks that's right. Sorry. I, I, I said thank, thanks for helping. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll get back to you on that. Are there any other PRs that people would like to review? All right, looking at the mailing list for the last seven days, I think there's only been a couple of emails in the last few days. We have the release 43, VM status definitions. Uh, Chandler had a question. I don't believe he's here, so I don't know if we've answered it, but uh, you know, I gave him a response and no traffic since then. Um, Jay, did we, I think I saw looking at the AWS EKS support, that the conversation wrapped up successfully from his point of view. Are we good there? I'll take complete silence as no context. I assume we're good. It, it, it seemed to have resolved. Uh, we can revisit if not. Uh, next thing we have is the stress versus stress NG. We've discussed that today. And six scale meeting notes. Is there anything, Ryan, worth bringing up in this uh, forum? Um, I, nothing in particular. I mean, we're, we're, we're making a lot of progress. And um, yeah, I mean, you can see in the notes. Okay, great. So I don't think there's anything outstanding, which is fantastic. So looking at open uh, issues and for bug scrub, we have only two that were open in the last seven days. So we've got a support hot plug volume being hot plugged after restart. Let me post the issue here. There we are. And so this is a enhancement. We've got a couple of comments. Anything to discuss at this level? I think the discussion is good on the PR. Oh, the issue already. Okay. And lift libfast guest container doesn't have proper CA certificates. Yeah, Alicia has a fix for that already. Nice. Okay. So fantastic. Thank you, Alicia. I, I don't know if she's here. So with that, there are no other bugs that have been proposed in the last seven days. Are there any bugs that are still needing to be discussed that have lingered on high priority? Great. Well, I don't have anything else for the agenda. Has anybody got anything on their mind? Okay. Well, it looks like that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. See you next week. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.